4-0-1 yesterday on the show. That makes it a 197, 167, and 12 overall run with free plays here on the Power 5 these last few months. Today, got more action for you, not to mention some basketball, both NBA and college. As a reminder, you can always comment on any of these selections down below, but if you'd be so kind as to smash that like button, your support always greatly appreciated as I continue to dole out the free plays here on Wager Talk TV. So here we go, number one, under 52 and a half, Ohio versus Kent State. The Kent State offense has generally been better uh, since third string quarterback Tommy Ulatowski took over. Three of the last four games have seen the Golden Flashes score 21 or more. Nevertheless, we're talking about an offense that for the season ranks 132nd in rushing and 122nd in passing. Just 250 total yards last time out against Western Michigan, and 150 of those came on two fourth quarter drives where the game was already well out of hand. Perhaps even more pertinent, Kent State, 127th in scoring, 19.9 points per game. They are the lone winless team in the country, of course. Now, betting the under, we do have to worry about the worst scoring defense in the country, which belongs to Kent State. But the good news is that OU, Ohio, my alma mater, has not topped 27 points in any game uh, prior to the last one. They had not done that. They're off their highest scoring effort of the season. But uh, this is a pretty high total by Bobcat standards as well. They've had only one game close with a higher over underlying all season. That was against South Alabama. That total was 55 and a half. Ended up as a 27-20 final. Uh, they'll win big, Ohio most likely. But I think it's a low scoring game under 52 and a half. Number two, let's turn to the other MAC game on Wednesday. As you may have heard on yesterday's edition of Wager Talk today, I like Northern Illinois money line minus 125 versus Western Michigan. Yes, Western Michigan is at home and 4 0 straight up in conference play. They're the only unbeaten team in conference play in the MAC. But the Broncos have beaten Akron, Ball State, Buffalo, and Kent State, arguably the four worst teams in the MAC. Three of those wins were by a total of 18 points. Uh, pardon me, by 20 points. Meanwhile, Northern Illinois, their four losses this season have been by a total of 23 points, none by more than seven. They outgained Toledo in a 13-6 to loss where they lost the starting quarterback to injury, outgained Buffalo by a wide margin, 359-184 in a three-point overtime loss, and they lost uh, on a last-second field goal at Ball State, did Northern Illinois. They've got quarterback Ethan Hampton back, Defense for the Huskies, top 20 nationally in terms of points allowed. They shut Western Michigan out, 24-0 last season. I think it's time for Thomas Hammock's team to win a close one. That's why we're playing the money line. Remember, this team, Northern Illinois, went to South Bend and upset Notre Dame earlier this season. Let's not forget that. That was a 3% client play for years truly. Yes, I brought it up again. Number three, let's now move to the NBA where we went 2-0 on Monday's show. Got a doubleheader Wednesday on ESPN. First game, I like Golden State plus seven at Boston. Yes, there's a gap between these two teams, but not this big, especially with Steph Curry back for the Warriors and Jalen Brown a question mark to play for the Celtics. Okay, the game's in Boston. However, just like the Celtics, the Warriors are top three in the league, both offensive and defensive efficiency. I could see Golden State winning outright more than I could see them getting blown out, and that's the bottom line. So we're going to take the points. For the record, the Dubs are 4-0 ATS their last four games overall. 6-1 and one ATS, the last seven head-to-head -head meetings with the Celtics. Number four, second game of tonight's ESPN doubleheader is the Sixers at the Clippers. Two of the more frustrating teams in this league to try and get a hold on, but I like the Clippers here, minus two. You can even play a money line if so inclined. No Joel Embiid for Philly, who's lost three straight. Paul George made his season debut Monday. Goes just 4-14 from the floor. That ends up being a 118-116 loss to the Suns. Just the second game this season where the Sixers covered the spread was that loss to the Suns. Both those ATS wins, both covers, uh, came as underdogs of seven or more. As for the Clippers, they did win last time out despite actually trailing by as many as 26 uh, against San Antonio. They were, yes, they were on 26 after the first quarter, in fact. I don't think they're going to be falling into that kind of hole again. Will the Clippers, who carry a better offensive and defensive rating than Philly thus far. Uh, Clippers actually top 10 in defense, so play the short home favorite. Let's close out the Power 5 now with a college hoops play. Thus far, the three college basketball plays I've given out on the show, they've all won. So let's go uh, Lehigh 
plus 14 and a half at Georgetown. Got to give you one obscure pick on the show today. Just can't pass up an opportunity to grab this many points, guys, against a Georgetown team that has won straight up only 23% of the time the last three seasons. So uh, the Hoyas is a double-digit favorite. Yeah, I'll take the other team. Now, we know Georgetown was one of the worst teams in the entire country last season when it came to defending inside the three-point arc. I think that comes back to bite them here. I think we're getting a little value, meanwhile, with Lehigh because they were not good uh, to be generous in a season opening loss to Northwestern. They lost by 44. They were down, I think, 51 to 15 at halftime in that game. But let's look at the Mountain Hawks here for a second. They do bring back two of their top three scores from last season. And something tells me they're going to shoot better than 32% overall and two of 17 from three. Those were the numbers against Northwestern. By the way, this is Georgetown's first game of the season. Perhaps a bit rusty. I think so. Wouldn't want to lay it with Georgetown here, so let's take Lehigh plus the points. So let's go ahead and recap the Power 5 for Wednesday. Number one, Ohio Kent State under 52.5. Number two, Northern Illinois Moneyline at Western Michigan. Number three, we now go to the NBA. Golden State plus seven at Boston. Number four, Clippers minus two against the Sixers. And number five, College Hoops, Lehigh plus 14 and a half at Georgetown. Again, comment down below with your thoughts and questions on those selections. Let me know what you were betting on tonight as well. Always enjoy seeing that. And after you've smashed that like button, which I'm sure you've already done, just head on over to wt.buzz slash bp, where I am still number one for the season in college football at Wager Talk. 45 and 22, my last 67 CFB bets going back to last season plus 75.4 units. That includes a 9-2 and two run with plays rated 4% or higher. Wednesday's card still being finalized as we speak. We're going to look to turn things around overall. Remember, I did finish up 45.3 units in the NBA last season. Soccer, despite a recent downswing, has been profitable as well going back to April. So again, head on over to wt.buzz slash bp. Any plays I add today will be there. We're going to start rolling out some football for the weekend as well. would like to thank each and every one of you who got on board yesterday's special offer. Uh, I had a play for Saturday that was available for just $5. Uh, If you missed that, it will be reposted shortly. That's going to do it for Wednesday's edition of the Power 5. Hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. And until next time, guys, let's catch some tickets.